In this video, we'll be looking at integrals with reduction formulas. Now, the idea behind these is basically to just derive a general formula for a particular form of integrals. And these usually come in two different forms or two different uh, types. The first type that we're going to look at is where we have to use an identity to help us get to this general formula. So in our first example, we're looking at this integral i n. So here n is just any integer, but we've got a restriction actually. It's n has to be greater than or equal to 2. But it's the integral from 0 to pi on 4 of tan to the power n x. And we need to show that that integral i n is equal to 1 over n minus 1 minus i of n minus 2. And of course, it's just for n greater than or equal to 2. Now, what's actually happening here? Well, let's have a first look at what our formula is. Let's try to get an understanding of that because usually that tells us how we're going to approach the question. Well, what is i n? i n is our integral. And then we have 1 over n minus 1. Now, for any particular n, that's just some fraction, just some constant. And then we have minus i n minus 2. i of n minus 2, we could say. But what's this? This is just the integral from 0 to pi on 4. Wherever I see an n in my original integral, I'm just going to write n minus 2. So this is tan to the power of n minus 2 x dx. So it's really the same integral with just the power of tan reduced by 2. So if we keep that in mind, let's have a think about how we can approach this integral now. We're looking at i n. And we want to end up with something that's reducing the power of tan by 2. Now, we know an identity that deals with tan and deals with tan with powers of 2. Let's write that on the side here. That's 1 plus tan squared equals sec squared. And then we can just rearrange this to get tan squared is equal to sec squared minus 1. Okay, now... Back to our integral, what we're going to do is, well, we know that we want to get a tan to the power of n minus 2 popping out. So let's just create that ourselves. Instead of tan to the power nx, let's write tan to the power n minus 2x. And then we have to multiply that by tan squared x. So the power here is still tan to the power n. It's just written slightly differently. But what we can do is we can now substitute for tan squared using that little identity we have on the side. So we're going to write, instead of tan squared, we'll write sec squared minus 1. And then we'll be able to expand that out in our next line. And when we do that, we'll get to the integral. What we're going to get is actually two integrals. So we're going to separate the two integrals. We'll get tan squared, sorry, tan to the n minus 2x times sec squared x dx minus the integral from 0 to pi on 4 of tan to the n minus 2x. And you can see that the integral on the end is actually i n minus 2 now. Okay, but how do we deal with the first integral? Let's slide this up a little bit. Well, the first integral is actually going to require a little substitution. Let's write it on the side here. So that's going to be u equals tan x. And when we differentiate that, we'll get du equals sec squared x dx. Now, we also have to change our limits. So we'll have when x is equal to pi on 4, well, u is going to be 10 of pi on 4, which is 1. And when x is equal to 0, u is going to be equal to 10 of 0, which is also 0. Okay, so we can now make that substitution. So the integral is now from 0 to 1 of tan to the power n minus 2, which is going to be u to the power n minus 2, times sec squared x dx. Well, that's just du. Minus this integral. Well, the second integral we already said was i of n minus 2. So we can just write it like that. And now we can quite easily evaluate this. We're going to add 1 to the power. So that will be n minus 1. And we divide by the new power. So we get an n minus 1 in the denominator, which is good because that's what we should expect from the question. And we evaluate that from 0 to 1. And then once we do that evaluation, if you substitute 1 in, you get 1 to the power of n minus 1, 
which is just going to be 1. So 1 over n minus 1. And then when we substitute 0 in, we'll get 0 on the top, which will make the whole thing 0. And then we still have the minus i of n minus 2. And there we've actually proved our general formula. This is our recurrence relationship. All right, so now that we have our formula, how can that actually help us? Well, let's suppose we're trying to work out this integral. It's the integral from 0 to pi on 4 of 10 to the power 5x dx. Now, this is exactly equal to i5, because it's exactly the integral i n, but where n is equal to 5. So now, to, do, to work out this integral using our formula, well, what is i5? It's going to be 1 over 5 minus 1, so 1 over 4, minus i of n minus 2, so 5 minus 2, which is 3. But what's i3? We can just use the same recurrence formula for i3. i3 is going to be 1 over 3 minus 1, so 1 over 2, minus i of 3 minus 2, which is 1. Now, our formula was only for n greater than or equal to 2. So now that we're at something where n is less than 2, we actually need to evaluate that explicitly. So we have a quarter minus a half, minus minus, so plus i of 1. But what is i1? i1 is the integral from 0 to pi on 4 of 10 to the power 1x, so just 10x. But that's not really a problem. We know how to integrate 10x. So a quarter minus a half, well, let's just simplify that now. It's minus a quarter. The integral of 10x is log of sec x. Okay, we've done that in a previous video, but if not, you just write 10 as sine on cos, and then it's just a simple log. And that's going between 0 and pi on 4. Okay, so we have minus a quarter. We can sub in our values for pi on 4. Sec of pi on 4 is root 2. So we have plus log of root 2. Minus log of sec of 0 is 1. And then we can just write log of root 2 as a half log of 2 if we want and log of 1 is, of course, 0. And that would be our final answer. So something that would have been fairly tedious to do, integrating 10 5x, we know how to do it, but it would have been quite tedious. Now we can do it using something much more simpler as, as we've seen in this recurrence formula. Our second example is one that falls under the category of using integration by parts. And these are probably a little bit more common than ones which use identities. Now, of course, in an exam, you wouldn't know that you need to use integration by parts or an identity. You wouldn't be told that you'd have to work it out for yourself. So how would we recognize that this question requires integration by parts? Well, let's have a look at it. We have the integral of log x to the power n between 1 and e. And we need to show that that integral i n is equal to e minus n times i of n minus 1. Now, I always find it very useful to write out what this integral is. It's the integral of from 1 to e of log x to the n minus 1. So what's actually happened between this integral and the previous one is the degree of log x has gone down by 1. Now what is there in calculus that reduces the degree of the power? Well differentiation does do that. It reduces the degree and it also brings down the original power, which is really convenient because that's exactly what we have here. We have n, which was our original power, and it's been brought down as a coefficient. So that suggests to me that we need to use integration by parts, because that involves differentiation. Okay, so we're looking at i n. Now this integral only contains one function. It's log x to the power n. However, we've already seen how to differentiate log of x, sorry, how to integrate log of x, and that's by using the trick of writing it as 1 times log x. So in this case, we're doing something very similar. We're writing it as 1 times log x to the power n. And from here, we can do our integration by parts. Obviously, we need to choose log x to the power n to be differentiated. And when we do that, we get n times log x to the n minus 1 times by the derivative of log x. We're multiplying by the inside derivative, which is 1 on x. And our v dash is 1, which means our v is x. So 
that's going to be u times v, which is log x to the power n times x between 1 and e minus the integral between 1 and e of u dash times v. So u dash is n times log x to the n minus 1, 1 on x times v, which is x, dx. And you can see now that these x's are going to cancel out. If we evaluate the first part here, when we substitute e in, we get log of e, which is 1, raised to the power n. Well, 1 to any power is going to be 1. So this is 1 times e minus, when we substitute 1 in, log of 1 is 0. So this is going to be 0. And then we have minus this integral. Now we've already cancelled the x and the x here. We can bring that n out as a, as a constant out the front. And we have the integral from 1 to e of log x to the n minus 1 dx. And looks like we're pretty much done. 1 times e is e minus n times this integral here is actually just i n. We've written it up here. Okay, so this is i n minus 1. And there we have it. That's our recurrence relationship proved.